Bernard yeah. Harris, um, we don't want you to fall asleep now. I'm curious, <laughs> does this, uh, does the anxiety level go up on board the uh, ship, or is this just uh, like another sim? Well, you know, we have, uh, we train uh, many aspects of this, all phases. Uh, nowhere can you get the entire uh, training. So you do it in phases, and they have been through this. Uh, about uh, three weeks ago, they came down here for dry count for those guys who are neophytes and new to the business. And uh, that makes you feel very comfortable about the machine that you're about to fly in. Did you feel comfortable, Dave? Absolutely comfortable. Uh, the, the training and knowing the people, the talent here, uh, felt good about it. There are crowds all, all over the place waiting to see this particular launch. Hundreds of thousands expected along the Space Coast. There are some of them right there, training binoculars to the sky, wondering if they can see anything, perhaps listening on the radio, understanding the hold, perhaps not, wondering why it hasn't launched at this moment. Miles, uh, uh, why don't we uh, take those models and put them up here and show what's going to happen in the launch profile immediately after the, the engines start. If the countdown is picked up, we'll just drop this. Uh, sure, go right ahead, Walter. We'll, we'll drop it because we don't want to break it. <laughs> but but it, it goes uh, about like this. The uh, uh, at at T minus 10 seconds, the command go for main engine start, and then T minus six seconds, these three main engines here at the base or the rear of the of the orbital uh, spacecraft, uh, they ignite. Now they've got to reach 90 percent of their thrust by T minus two, or there's an automatic shutdown. At T0, that's the launch time, the solid rocket boosters here on the side, they ignite. That's when the whole thing looks like it's going up. Onboard computers command hold down bolts there uh, to be blown, and that launches the thing into beginning its mission. And that's, at that point, there's no turning back. Uh, 140 uh, uh, million horsepower. Yes. It's hard to turn it around. Yep. <laughs> Seven yeah. million pounds that's of thrust. Right. My guess that's a big firecracker. Now, now, as we see it goes up, we've seen these pictures many times. We're going to see it again today. That seven seconds uh, after launch, the shuttle will have cleared the tower out there, which we don't see here, which surrounds it now. It would clear the tower. The, the roll begins. The machine begins to roll over so that the, the uh, spacecraft, the orbiter, is on the bottom and, and upside down. That's the roll and yaw. And that uh, gives the crew a, a, a chance to see the horizon to orient themselves in flight, which they couldn't do otherwise. Now, at that point, the control of the mission is lost from here and goes to Houston uh, until until the landing back here. Uh, now, 30 seconds later, they they throttle back the engines. Up to then, they've gone up to practically full power, but uh, but the spacecraft is built to tolerate three g three three times gravity, three times its weight, or, and the, the, with full power at that point still in the atmosphere, they'd be getting more g-force than that and blow this thing apart. So they throttle back until they get through that uh, atmosphere that is slowly causing this buffeting at that point, and then they power up again and they're on the way to, to space. At T minus, or T plus 60 seconds, one minute after they're up there, uh, the shuttle's at around 30, 3,000 feet, I think, right, to Dave? More than six miles up, anyway. And that's when the main engines are throttled up to 104% of their power. Two, uh, 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 oh, uh, two minutes, then another minute after that, the shuttle is 30 miles high, traveling at 2,890 miles per hour, it says here. I can't remember all these numbers. That's right. That's when the, that's when the solid rocket boosters are jettisoned. Uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, that's T plus two minutes. Uh, they're jettisoned, they parachute down after 17,000 feet are recovered and rebuilt for future missions. At T30, two and a half minutes up there, they go for transatlantic abort. That would mean that they no longer have to worry about uh, their very difficult maneuver of turning around trying to get back to the space center here to land but can land in Africa or in Spain. If one they of the lose an engine. Hmm? If they lose an engine, they can still make it across yep. at that point, exactly. Right, right. And, uh, and and that's about the story. Very shortly thereafter, the main engines are throttled down uh, a little more. At our, that's early on. Uh, at uh, what time do they go into orbit, actually? At 17,500 miles an hour, eight minutes plus. Uh, 
T minus T plus eight, right? Yeah, eight, eight minutes thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. I believe it was eight thirty. We have some news uh, from John Zarella, who's down on the ground there. John, go ahead. Miles, what we heard was that uh, range safety reported that there were multiple contacts, that the radar was saturated within the box, which is a 10-mile by 30-mile wide box, and we seem to have seen actually what looked like skywriters in the distance. A couple of FAA aircraft have been sent up to chase them off, and I believe now they gave the clear, all clear, and in fact, the clock is ticking again. Miles? Your timing's impeccable, John Zarella. As you stood there, the clock began ticking down once again. And, uh, gentlemen, we should not expect another pause at this point unless there is another problem, correct? That's correct. All right. We should go this, all the way down. This is home. What's going on right now, it's, Dave? It's time to start the auxiliary power units. This is what burns hydrazine. Three of them provides the hydraulic pressure for the aero surfaces, the ailerons, if you will, and to gimbal the engines. The, that's pointing the engines in the right direction. Very critical. These engines will be gimbaled and tested over the next minutes. They'll pr presumably advise us at uh, T minus two minutes that they have been able, they're able to scrub that 31 second uh, hold that they've built in there. That's right. We'll expect an error to occur. There was a minor problem with the sensor determined weeks ago. It wasn't worth fixing, but it's going to cause a master alarm when the engines gimbal and the data will be checked by the people in the launch control center since the data hasn't has failed they need to clear that failure flag if you will by 31 seconds in order to prevent the automatic launch sequencer from initiating automatically a hold at 31 seconds so we should not see a hold if that error is cleared bernard harris 31 seconds is a very important milestone in the countdown. What happens then? It is. Well, let me back up and talk uh, what the crew is feeling inside the time that Dave is talking about checking out the engines. This is the first time that uh, as you're sitting there for the hour, two hours that you're in, in the vehicle, that the vehicle starts moving. You can actually feel the gimbling inside of this, and you know that you're about to go somewhere. And this is serious business. Uh, at 30 seconds, of course, uh, you've got your visors down, of course, called at two, T minus two minutes, and uh, everybody is, is anxious and uh, ready to, to get this show on the road. And isn't it true at this point, too, the shuttle's computers sort of take over at the, and then it becomes a, an opportunity, well, it, you're going to fly, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And that's another critical point, of course, because when you turn over the launch control computers to the onboard computers, then they all have to come up to speed and be able to take, o take over launch. I have trouble reading the electric lights in that clock. What is that? Two minus it's 30? Like with 230. 230. The computers are right now making thousands of checks per second of all the orbiter systems. If anything should come up, they will flag it. What are we seeing here, Dave? Yes, sir, uh, That's the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood. That is a liquid oxygen tank filled with a half a million gallons of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. That sucks the ec the extra that's venting out of the top away. It's moving away from the orbiter. So far, everything going according to the script, right? Everything according to the script. Yep. Looks good. Again, we're looking for the solid... Okay, they're talking about the engine two pitch. I believe they're removing that hole. I believe that's what they just said. All right. The winds of discovery lift us onto the future. Just the visors electric. have been closed, and they've gone to oxygen, so they are ready to fly now. It's just an electric environment here today. Okay, apparently there's another range safety issue to report. They're going to hold at... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. They just say the range was clear. They've removed the hold. 